Hi there. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you today is how to make these little trees out of uh, bits of scrap. I use three different colored greens and then of course lots of clear. This one in particular is a little Christmas tree. I've added a stand that will allow you to attach the presents to it and then the little guy putting the star on top. This one here is just a, it's again, a, it was a, a Christmas tree. It doesn't have to be. I just put the little balls on it and uh, the deer in the forest. It uh, uses up scraps quite nicely and uh, gives a much more fun little piece if you want to uh, sell these. That it, it, it kind of uh, relates to the, uh, the stand a little bit. And then the last one that I have here is the moose. And this is a two-part stand, and again, he just looks quite sharp. There's no little balls or anything on him. But this is all done up with scrap, and it's kind of fun, and I make them whenever I've got a chance to just throw some things in the kiln and, and uh, keep them on hand. So I've started um, one here. Now what I do is I just draw out a basic design. You don't have to be that fussy because you're not going to follow anything anyways. So you layer your greens, just random. The only thing that I found that is an absolute must is you have to, on your edges, make sure that when you put a piece of green down, that that gets covered with a piece of clear. Now it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be there so that now you're going to get, you know, a piece of clear over top of this little edge. It's going to strengthen it and it's not going to shrink up on you too much. And it doesn't show up. It just sits there and gives that little edge a bit of strength. So the rest is just basically random. And I don't know if you've used the nippers, but these are my best friends. I just nip the green up in all sorts of different shapes. Um, you can make smaller ones later so you don't have to make bigger ones. And uh, here's another green. We'll just nip that up like that. And then here's a bit of a darker one. And again, I'll just throw some of these on just so you have an idea of what we're trying to do. So we'll find that edge. We're going to put that little piece in there. We're going to put this guy in here, and you can just build it up however you want your tree to look. And again, the most important part is make sure you've got, and if they happen to attach to another little piece like that, all the better. That's going to give it a little bit more strength in holding your design. Make sure your top gets a nice little point. That's a fairly good one. You can use smaller pieces in there and just keep piling this up and putting your clear on, piling it up. Once you've got a nice shape and all your edges are all nicely covered with your clear, then you can start filling in your center. And again, fill your center in with clear, uh, green, um, all random shapes, some sticking out, some coming up. You want it to be as random as possible so that it does look like a little tree in the forest. So that's how this is done from the bottom. And just keep piling it up, piling it up. Being, don't be fussy. Now, once I've got all that, that's what I've done here. And I'm just going to swing this around so you can see. Okay, you can see your edges covered in the clear. There's some clear in the middle. There's lots of green. There's all random. There's nothing spectacular. So now I'm going to take some larger pieces of frit. And I'm just going to, again, just randomly... Put some of this, this is a adventuring green which has a little bit of sparkle in it and I really quite love it. Um, so get some in those holes, mostly in the center because you're going to create kind of a little bit of a dark forest look in the middle there. And once you've got enough of the dark in where you want it, that's the sparkly, I take two others. This is a lighter one and you can do this with a little enamel sifter. And I 
just get some color in there a little bit of highlight whatever goes off the edge you don't have to worry about because it'll either stick or it won't okay and then i have a third color here You don't want too much at the very bottom where you're going to have your stand because, of course, that's going to be covered up. So you don't want to have too much down here. You want a nice solid edge at the bottom so that it's going to sit nicely down on your stand. Now, if you were going to turn this into a Christmas tree, I make all these little balls in advance. And I do that by, again, using my magic nippers, holding my finger there, and nipping little bits and firing those. I put hundreds of these on a little tray and I fire them at um, 1500, just right up, right back down, and they will mound up into all little sized shapes of balls with a flat bottom. Okay, so that makes a real nice little Christmas tree type ball and as long as they're flat, just put them all over. Oops, that's not a round one. And there's some green ones. Lots of people like the traditional. I like sparkly. So I do the same thing with little bits of the iridescent pieces like that. And I make them all into little sparkly balls like that just by exactly the same thing, just chopping them up. So put all your colors on there or not if you're just going to have a little forest tree. And um, that's quick and easy. You'll have two finished and uh, ready to go in no time. Now my firing schedule for this again is really, really quick. I take it um, up to 960 and I just hold it for about 10 minutes. And then I take it as fast as possible up to 1410, 1420, hold for another uh, 10 minutes, back to 960, hold for 25 minutes, and then just let it go right down. Because it's all smaller pieces, you're not going to have to worry too much about your heat um, breaking any of the pieces. The heat will get it in all the way around. So give it a try. And if you have any questions, by all means, email me and, uh, and I'll try and help you out where I can.